praise if you know that there's nobody like him. Come on, I said, give our God a praise if you know that there's nobody like him. Hallelujah, God, we bless your name. Because there's nobody like you, God. There's nobody like you, God. We bless your name. Hallelujah. And because there's no one like you, God, we give you all the glory. We give you the honor. We declare that you are Lord and forever your truth shall reign. How many of y'all know that our God is exalted? He's worthy. If you know that he's exalted, come on and lift up your worship to him this morning. Come on and just lift up your worship to him. Tell God how thankful you are for him. God, we bless your name. We honor your name. Hallelujah. Come on, let's sing together. He is exalted. The king is. The king is exalted. And I, and I will praise. Sing, he is exalted. He is exalted. The king. The king is exalted. And I will praise. Will praise his name. Come on, let's shout together. Sing.
version of the Bible, my Bible reads thusly, how can a young person stay on the path of purity by living according to your word? David says, I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. The grass wither and the flower fades, but the word of God will last for eternity. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of God. Put and given to us so that we would have a, a guide in how we should and could live our life when life happens child of God, one of the things I want to let you know is that life is going to happen. And when life happens, you need to ensure that you have enough word in you to get you through what it is that you're going through. I'm not talking about enough opinions. I'm not talking about church jargon or, or church vocabulary, but I'm talking about the word of God. Case and why is it that I need the word of God in my life uh, when life happens? Because God does not respond to opinions. Y'all ain't gonna help me in here. God does not respond to your emotionalism. God does not respond to your requests. But the one thing that God must respond to is God's word. God has an obligation. Uh, that when he hears his word, uh, that he will respond uh, to his word. 
The Bible lets us know that God is not a man that he could lie, nor the son of man that he needs to repent. And so whatever God says, because he is God, comes to pass. And so even if God did not want to respond to God's word, because God says what he says, automatically there has to be a response. It's a reason that some of us continue to go through what we go through, and that's because we put opinions on our problems we we put we put emotions on our problems we we put everything else on our problem except the word of god you cannot expect change. You, you cannot expect growth. You cannot expect transformation by simply citing your opinions. But you need the word. And I would argue this morning that, that some of us don't use the word because we don't really truly believe that it works. Ah, Y'all ain't going to help me in here. Yeah, some of us don't use the word because we're looking for a level of instantaneous gratitude that's that, that, that is not going to take place uh, overnight. But I, I want to help you this morning, child of God, and let you know that the word works if you're willing to work the word. Uh, some of us want the word to work, but we don't want to put the work with the word. Well, let me, let me help you. It's biblical what I'm preaching uh, this morning because Bible says faith uh, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But it also says uh, that faith uh, without works uh, is dead. Uh, that you can have all the word that you want, uh, but unless you work it, uh, ain't nothing going to change uh, in your Situation. You can know the Bible from Genesis to Revelations, but unless you work it, ain't nothing going to change. You can know all of the major and minor prophets, all of the two, the two different dissections of Old and New Testament, but unless you work it, nothing is going to change. I would like to suggest to you this morning that God is not going to give you a, a test when you get to heaven based upon your scriptural knowledge. He's not going to be concerned if you've read the whole Bible. He, he's not going to be concerned if you can break down the different divisions of Psalms. He's not going to be concerned if you know how to dissect Hebrew or Greek. Can I tell you, can I present to you this morning what I believe in my high Christology and theology, what God is looking for? God is looking for somebody that can live what's in the book. And you living what's in the book is not predicated on you knowing all of the different scriptures and vocabulary. You living in the book is really concerned with what we're dealing here with in the text this morning. David pens this 119th division of the Psalms. We get to verse 9, Cammy. He says, how can a young person stay on the path of purity? David, to raise this question of staying on the path of purity means that there must have been some pollution. David would not ask about purity if purity remained. But somewhere, life has allowed some pollution to come in and corrupt the life of this young person. Oh, don't look at me with those judgmental eyes behind those masks. Let me help you. We all have a problem with pollution every now and then. Might be pollution of our thoughts. Might be the pollution of our vocabulary. You can dissect that however you desire. But we all have dealt with some level of pollution in our life which now has contaminated the purity of God. And if we're going to understand that the word works, the first thing we got to do is recognize the rules. That all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But there is a way that we can align ourselves to filter some of this nasty world's pollution from us. 
to get us back to the space and place of purity. David says, how can this happen? I'm glad David raises the question, Ramona, but I'm even more grateful that he gives an answer behind it. Every now and then you got to preach to yourself. David says, how can a person stay on the path of purity by living according to your word? That God has already given us the guidelines for greatness. But it's up to us to align ourselves with what he said. Let me say that again for the people in the back that don't know how to say amen. It's up to us to align ourselves with what he said. One more time for those that may be slightly, as my granddaddy would say, diff or hard of hearing. It's up to us to align ourselves with what he said. Why you keep saying that, Cason? Because God is not going to force you to align yourself with what he says. You have to desire her. For the Bible says that they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. What are you saying, Casey? And when you get to the point that you're sick and tired of being sick and tired of getting what you're getting, then hopefully David has already given us a solution to how to get out of what we're in. Me being stuck is not a God problem. Me being stuck stuck is me is a me problem uh, that I'm so stubborn uh, that I refuse to try and do it uh, God's way uh, and when it gets to the place uh, where you no longer desire uh, what you have been getting uh, but you desire what God has uh, in store for you uh, then you'll move from your stubborn stupidity uh, and stuckness uh, and get into a sanctified setting uh, that you can do it God's way recognize there are rules to this we think that we can have it any way we like it that is not who God is God has given us the word so that we can understand the standards in order to receive the magnificent miracles he has in store for us I would challenge you today, I would wrestle with your theology that you are not awaiting God, but God is awaiting you. That you remove yourself out of your own way so that you can walk in the wonders of God. Number one, I recognize the rules. David says, how can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. Then he says, I seek you with all my heart. Uh, do not let me stray from your commands. I seek you with all my heart. David does not compartmentalize God to Sundays and Wednesdays and with some things and not others. I feel that part of the reason that some of us struggle is that we have compartmentalized God and we've only let God into certain places and spaces where we desire him to work. Uh, we've given God some of us, uh, but we have not relinquished full control of God uh, to God for all of us. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I'm not just preaching to you. I'm preaching to me too. There's some things that I haven't let go of yet. There's some ways that I haven't let go of yet. And if we can keep it 100 on this morning, it's not that I don't know that they are wrong. It's just that I ain't ready to give them up yet. Y'all ain't gonna help me preach in this place. It's not that I don't know that they ratchet. It's just that I ain't ready to let the ratchetness go yet. It's not that I don't know that they don't please God. It's just that I ain't ready to stop doing what I'm doing yet. Preach, Patrick Gates. I heard William Murphy say this one time. William Murphy said some things, he said, I like what I like and some of the things I like God don't like y'all ain't gonna help me in here listen listen and, and and it's because I have I have a level I have a level of concern when it when even when it comes to God with being completely vulnerable 
that I have not fully given all of me to God because of me. And I'm scared that if I let go all of me, I'll lose me. And because I don't know what the new me really looks like, there's some parts of me that I hold on to because that's what I identify myself with. And God is saying, I can't make you into the new you until you release all of the old you. So you still going to keep getting the old you problems until you let go of all of the old you. You still going to keep catching old you attitudes until you let go of the old you. David says, I've given you my whole heart. I seek you with my whole heart. That that means that there are no spaces and places that are off limits from God. And so I recognize the rule, but the second thing is I got to remember my reasons. Why did I come to God in the first place? You know, we preach sometimes and I even go down, I was sinking deep in sin far from the peaceful shore. Very stainly deep within seeking the, to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters he lifted me. Now safe am I. I got to remember my reasons. That if I don't allow God into all of the spaces and places, then he's simply a savior. And not legitimately my Lord. It's one thing to be saved. It's something else when you make him Lord. When, when Jesus comes into your life, when God becomes your Lord, you are now removing what's important to you in order to obtain what's important to him. Your desire of personal pleasure has now diminished with the desire to please God in every aspect of your life. So it does not matter what you think or feel. And I know that's, that's, that's taken the human emotionalism, that's taken uh, uh, the empathy out of, 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 of the scripture, but at the end of the day, it's just my understanding that if I'm in love with God, I am more concerned about what, what he feels than I am about what I feel. Remember your reasons. Recognize the, rule. Recognize the rules. Remember your reasons. Then he says this. He says, I seek you with my whole heart. Do not let me stray from your commandments. Verse 11 says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. David says, I had to put <laughs> what was important to you at the core of me. Because the heart is what controls our functionality. The heart is what controls how you feel. The heart is what controls how you act. The heart, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, controls how you think. Um, I had to learn how to be vulnerable. And the only way you can learn how to be vulnerable is by surrendering your heart. So me and my wife, we were, we were on vacation and and as we were on vacation, we had some tough conversations. Um, those conversations that at the end of the conversation, it can change the atmospheric pressure of the room. And so, as we were having these tough conversations, I got defensive. In the midst of me getting defensive, she had to remind me, 
She said, bruh, I ain't trying to hurt you. I'm trying to help you. But because of my lack of vulnerability in the moment, it made it difficult to receive. So I took the defense. And she said to me this, Cammie, it, it changed the whole perspective. She said, I love you. So anytime I tell you something, I need you to assume positive intent. David says, I love you so much, I'm going to put your word in my heart that will shift the core of me, that will change how I respond because the last thing I want to do is offend you. We recognize the rules, it's coming. We remember the reasons. But I came to let somebody know that the word works, especially when you put it in your heart, because it's now readily reachable. That all you have to do is put the word in your heart. And when you put the word in your heart, it'll start working all by itself. When you put the word in your heart, It'll change how you think about people. When you put the word in your heart, it'll change how you respond in heavy situations. David says, I'm going to put your word in my heart because the last thing I want to do is to offend you. It says, I might not sin against God. David says, God, I'm not a perfect man, but I am a man after your own heart. And because I'm chasing after your heart, I need you to assume positive intent that there's nothing that I'm trying to do to hurt you. And so I came to let somebody know uh, that it's readily reachable. Uh, that means all you have to do uh, is put the word in your heart uh, and the word will start working on you. Uh, grandmama used to put it like this. Uh, things I used to do uh, I don't do anymore. Uh, that's not because I'm so good uh, but that's because of the word. Uh, places I used to go uh, I don't go anymore. Uh, that's not because I don't desire to go there, but it's because of the word. I heard the hymnist say, something on the inside is working on the outside. And oh, what a change has come over me. It's readily reachable. Well, let me leave you with this story. As harmony began to grow, I saw her start maneuvering a little different. She would look at me, Cammie, and say, Daddy, uh, I'm a big girl now. Uh, I said, well, what does that mean? She starts saying, Daddy, uh, I don't need you to do this for me. Uh, Daddy, I don't need you to do that for me. Uh, well, the other day, I was standing uh, in the living room, uh, and I watched her walk into the kitchen. Uh, and as she walked into the kitchen, uh, she opened up the bottom part of the refrigerator, uh, and she opened up the top part of the refrigerator, uh, and she put her little feet inside the bottom part of the refrigerator and she reached up and she grabbed the grapes and pulled the grapes down. I said, Harmony, what are you doing? She said, Daddy, I'm hungry. And so I was going to get me some grapes. She, I said, Harmony, all you had to do was ask me, what if you spill the grapes? What if you drop the grapes? She said, Daddy, I don't need you to get the grapes for me because I'm a big girl now. That means I can reach it all by myself. Well, I'm coming this morning talking to those that are mature in God that have taken the word of God and hid it into their hearts. I want to let you know that tests and trials will come. I want to let you know that tribulations
situation and circumstances will come. But when you have the word of God inside of you, all you got to do is reach in the inside and pull out the word of God. Because God, God, God responds to his word. Have I got a witness here that knows when you give God the word that he gave you, he will respond. I'm trying to tell somebody how to get a prayer through. I'm trying to tell somebody how to change their situation. I'm trying to tell somebody how to change their circumstance. To tell somebody how to fix it for them. I'm trying to tell you that if you use the word of God, God will respond to you. Have I got a witness here that when I call on the name of the Lord, he's not interested in my opinions. He's not interested in what I think. But if I need, I need, I need, I need an answer to get to me.
God will lift up a standard because he sits on the balconies of heaven watching over his word. The word works. It's you. You've got to work the word. It'll work. It'll work. But you, you, you have a part to play. You can't expect this relationship to be one-sided. I can't just believe. Can't just say I believe. But then my actions dictate something different. But my actions have to align with what I believe. And I got to be vulnerable. Can I let you know that's all that faith is? Just being vulnerable. God speaking a word. See, a lot of us got trust issues. I, I, I have trust issues. You become a sum total of your experience. And when you've experienced brokenheartedness, when you've experienced hurt, it becomes even difficult for you to let God in those spaces. Now listen, let me, let me, I'm going to say this, I'm going to jump out here. You know they say, hell have no fury like a woman scorned, right? But I would challenge that the other side of the coin of that is, Nothing's worse than a man who's had his heart broken. Because after that space of vulnerability, and he finally gets his pride and self together, he makes this comment. And the only reason I know, because I made the comment, he says this, I will never allow anybody to hurt me like that again and so it then becomes even more difficult for you to love God with your whole heart when you don't even have your whole heart you make the decision and say I will never love like that again you have now surgically and spiritually removed a part of your heart that cannot be replaced you've literally said I have put this part of me off limits so David said I had to get to the place where God could surgically mend my heart back together so that I could love God and trust God with all of me. The word can't work if you don't trust it. Trust it beyond your situation. Trust it beyond your circumstance. And this is the part that's going to mess you up. Trust it beyond what you see right now. And keep working it. But past the case that I've been working it and I've been fasting and I've been praying and I've been doing all the things that you've been telling me to do and it doesn't seem like it's working. It's hard for me to come in here and listen to you tell me to work the word when I've been doing everything I know how to do with the word and I'm not getting any results. Like I'm still waking up stuck. sounds crazy, right? That sounds crazy, right? So Renee, we decided, um, you know, my wife, even though she doesn't like to go outside, she likes green grass. 
So me and, and Kiki the other week, we went to we went to Lowe's. Um, and I said, I need to get some weed and feed. Right? So Kiki was like, hey, Pastor, uh, I'm getting this five and one. I saw some commercials on this stuff. This stuff's supposed to be good. I said, Kiki, I ain't never heard of this stuff before. Hey, Pastor, trust me. If, if it worked like, he said, if it worked like the commercial said it worked, it's going to work good. So I said, well, you my man. I'm going to trust you. If you get in the bag, I'm going to get a bag. So we both got a bag of weed and feed. When I went home, I cut my grass. And I took the weed and feed, and I put it in the aerator, and I went around my yard, and I put the weed and feed down. Nothing happened. It still looked like the same raggedy yard that it looked like before I put the weed in feed. Well, the rain came. I thought, oh, I'm going to have something now, Mike. It's raining. And this is for somebody who is raining in your life and you think just because it's raining, it's over. I woke up the next morning, nothing. I said, man, listen, this Kiki done got me buying this mess. This mess don't even work. So, I said, well, I ain't worried about it. I'm going on vacation. I went on vacation. And I got this thing called Ring App. So, any time somebody comes on my front porch, walks by down the street, Ring App goes off. My Ring App kept going off. It was, it was the Amazon man. Sorry, that, that was shady. I'm sorry. I looked at my phone and I said, Tori, would you look at this? And she said, what? I said, look at how green the grass is. I said, it worked. It didn't work when I wanted it to work. But in due season, after some rain, and some do and some time what I sowed came into fruition I could have given up and said man listen I'm just going to cut this grass and put something else down but I waited and I kept believing because I kept checking my ring app. Listen. Stop sitting around and waiting to watch grass grow. Sow the seed. Water the seed. about your life as if it was already done. The word works. But you got to work the word. Standing all over the building. Listen, virtually we want to invite you if you have not given your life to Christ. There's a phone number there. There's an email address there. We're going to pray the prayer with you. If you want special prayer, please send your email. Please send us an email. Please uh, inbox us on Facebook. Give us a call at that number listed so that we can take the time to pray with you and pray for you. If you are saved but in broken relationships, to recommit yourself. That same information is there for you. Lastly, if you are looking for a church home, some place where you can go and grow, be and be blessed, that information is there. Now listen, I know we so traditional. We, we want me to say the doors of the church are open and people walk down the aisle. That's not happening. Join virtually. You can.
Call us on the phone. We'll send you some paperwork. It's not, listen, we're more concerned about you being connected than we are about how you get connected. We're more concerned about you being covered in the midst of this. And so those are some ways. So I, I got some family members that are watching uh, that want to be connected. You, you, know how you, you know who you are. Stop waiting for me to open the doors of the church. Y'all come on, be connected. They know who I'm talking to, Brianne. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. You forever keep your word. Your word is forever with us. I pray for that lost soul today, that person that does not know you. We pray, God, send us prayer, God, come into our life. Give me up my sins. I recognize you as Savior and Lord. taking the time to tune in to the Bethany Experience Virtual Worship. Uh, we pray that something was said or done in this moment to help you along life's journey. Now, if you desire to support the Bethany Baptist Church, there are three ways in which you can do it. First, you can give via Givelify. All you have to do is download the Givelify app and look for Bethany Baptist Church. Secondly, you can log on to our website, www.experiencebethany.com. And lastly, you can stop by the church, 2587 Campostella Road in the beautiful city of Chesapeake. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you and we'll see you in the morning.